So, this is Morgan Matthews, who <laughs> directed the film. Um, we're going to spend the next 20-25 um, minutes um, um, essentially having a, a chat, basically, so you can ask questions. But I thought um, we, might, we might be able to start off with... Because um, um, I understand that the film was inspired by a documentary that you made That's in right. 2007. So That's right. So, um, is, can everyone hear uh, all right? Do I need to yeah. shout? Okay. So about um, eight years ago, I made a film, um, a documentary uh, called Beautiful Young Minds, which um, followed the progress of a group of young people, a young uh, group of young British people, uh, teenagers, on their journey towards the International Mathematical Olympiad. Um, and uh, s some of the characters and the storylines in this film are very much connected to, to that documentary. Um, and uh, yeah, the, it, it took a, a long time to sort of get, get on the screen, um, but seven years later, uh, here we are. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, this is, it's, it's very much a film that has foundation in reality, foundation in, in fact. Um, yeah. 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 Any questions? Oh, straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I can tell I can tell you a little bit more about it if that would help. Yeah, um, I think that would be yeah. great. Yeah, how did yeah how okay. did you? So so the journey so again started about seven eight years ago and I, I was making um, some documentaries for the BBC about um, what you might call niche competitions or competitions that are not necessarily uh, very well known. Um, I, I made a film about the World Taxidermy Championships, um, <laughs> uh, which you may be familiar with, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, or otherwise the World Hairdressing Championships uh, and the World Elvis Impersonating Championships <laughs> and also a million dollar pigeon race. Um, and about that time I was working with a producer who um, uh, introduced me to the Inter International Mathematical Olympiad and I thought, well, one of these films that I'm working on is probably going to go wrong and you know, it won't work out for whatever reason, so we need a, a kind of backup. Um, and I went to meet the wider squad, the Olympiad squad, <coughs> who were training at that time. And I was so taken with the, the young people that I met, and I thought they were absolutely wonderful and, and uh, extraordinary um, characters, and also the people who were training them, uh, their teachers. And it began this incredible journey, and uh, it, it took place over a period of probably about six months. Um, during which time I concentrated on a, a number of the, a small number of the individuals who then went on to make up the team that represents the UK at the Olympiad. And there are six, six young people um, every year who, who go to represent the UK at the International Mathematical Olympiad. And one of those young people um, was called Daniel. Um, and uh, he was a, a, a really interesting young man. And whilst we were filming with him, he was... Uh, diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, um, which I understand now is a little bit outdated as a, as a term, or I've been told that. Um, but at the time we were filming, he was diagnosed, and we were, f we were there, we were present for that, and uh, he was diagnosed by Simon Baron Cohen, who, um, uh, who, who, who you may be familiar with. But um, he, uh, he went on a journey, to, uh, he, he became, he was very interested in China, and he became... Um, he probably, w in his own words, would say obsessed with China, and he taught himself Mandarin in three months. Um, and he went to China, and he came back with a, a Chinese girlfriend, um, and he married her when he was 18. Um, and so that, that romance, that was very real. Uh, uh, and, uh, and that was the end of the documentary, and we filmed their wedding. Um, <coughs> but uh, I didn't think that people would believe that 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 happened, so we didn't make it the end of the film, as in X plus Y, um, and I thought it might be a bit cheesy. Um, so <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's what happened, that is actually what happened. Um, and there were a couple of other young people who um, were, were part of that documentary who became the inspiration for, for uh, some of the characters that you saw in, in, in this film. Um, although we did take, a, uh, I would say, a significant amount of creative license with the film because I didn't see a great deal of purpose in simply remaking the documentary as it was. Um, so the characters and their stories provided the inspiration, if you like, and then we were quite creative with that. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, yeah. 
an ex really of <laughs> ways to roving mics I'm right uh, anyway I badly I have to say that was the best depiction I have ever seen of autism and Asperger's syndrome bar none so including red so thank you very much for that I do have questions about the whole of themes I noted you put two two people on the spec who were on the spectrum and that whole relationship of uh, of the outsider and the insider that's one of the key themes that comes through the film what in in doing this film and you had to i'm trying to get uh, to this point um may i ask what uh, in exploring it what themes did you think came up and what themes can it and be explored? Thanks for your patience. No, not at all. Thanks for, uh, for everything that you said. And I mean, that means an enormous amount to me. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think that, that my experience with the young people that I was filming was, uh, I, you know, it, it wasn't... I mean, it's difficult because I don't, I don't want to feel the responsibility that I am representing autism as a whole through this film. I'm, I'm representing a number of characters, and I hope that I... Um, uh, being kind of authentic to their experience, um, the the people who inspired the, uh, the, those characterizations. Um, but I also know from, from my experience and from the young people that I met and other documentaries that I've made that everyone on the spectrum is completely different. And um, I encountered a number of young people who, who had had a diagnosis but were completely different from each other. And um, and I think also what was interesting for me, um, so Luke, who, uh, who is the character who, who ultimately who is, who doesn't get onto the team and we see self, self-harming, was also um, inspired by a character, um, uh, a real person. And what I experienced when we were making the documentary was that um, here was a group of young people, and irrespective of whether they were on the spectrum or not, several of them had experienced... Um, uh, quite negative things in their lives and had been bullied and had been ostracized from their peer groups within their schools partly because of their um, interest and focus on mathematics um, which was they felt often considered weird or geeky or whatever it might be and partly because they were so far ahead of the other students around them that that kind of ostracized them even from their teachers they were operating at a level above their teachers and so when they came together in this group, there was an initial period where they kind of flourished. And it was very exciting to see because um, they'd, they'd been felt isolated for so long. And then suddenly they were around people who had the same interests as them, the same experiences as them, and uh, who wanted to stay up all night doing maths um, at the level that they, they were operating at. But then what I also saw within that group was... Um, the character who, who Luke is based on um, was ultimately was ostracized within that group and here were people who experienced some of that um, if you like in, it was more intellectual bullying in a way um, rather than physical and who had experienced that themselves and, and yet that was happening within the group as well because he was uh, quite an abrasive in a way character and 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 I thought he was wonderful, and every time we had a conversation, I, was, I really enjoyed it. But he rubbed some people up the wrong way. Um, and his defense, if you like, was to, uh, to almost exclude himself. But that, that made him quite isolated, even within that group. I'm sorry, I feel that doesn't answer your question properly. That's fine. It's very good. It's very good. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I have Ka- Karen. Um, the character, the main character who you say was based on somebody called Daniel. Yes. The real person. <coughs> hang, hang on, Caroline. We might wait for you to mic up because yes. then everyone can hear your question. Sorry, I, I'm just curious about the Daniel that the. Ca- is this okay? That the. Um, that the main character was based on, were they as alienated from their mother and their teacher, like as um, separate from any human connection before meeting the Chinese person as um, the character in that film? Well, I think that he 
felt. I, I, in a way, the experience and the relationship with, with his mother is a, an amalgamation of, of different um, relationships that I experienced. Um, and but he, I think, felt more alienated from society as a whole, particularly from British society. Um, and he didn't really. Um, he, he felt that uh, mathematics wasn't valued in this country um, in the way that it is in China. Um, and again, he experienced quite negative uh, attitudes around him towards the fact that he was just sort of so focused on mathematics in the way that he was. And he dropped all of his other subjects um, at GCSE. He wouldn't study anything else apart from mathematics and Mandarin. And so he taught, he taught himself Mandarin, but he identified with Chinese culture. And when he went to Chinese culture, he felt at home, um, partly because he explained to me, and this is all stuff that he was able to explain to Asa, because Asa, who plays Nathan, met Daniel. And Daniel thinks that he's not a very good communicator. <coughs> and he finds communication very difficult and stressful. Um, and he's, but he's a, actually a brilliant communicator. And he's able to explain exactly why he finds it difficult. Um, if he was in a room like this and he was in front of everybody, that would be very difficult for him. But if you spend time with him and sit in a quiet room and talk for a few hours, he's a actually able to uh, articulate this brilliantly. And he was able to explain to Asa that it's, he, he doesn't know how to read facial expressions <coughs> and he doesn't know what to do with, with his own face and the, the, the process of communication becomes so stressful that he would avoid it entirely. And that made him appear quite introvert. But he is very able to do it, but it ju he just found the process quite stressful. Because <coughs> when he taught himself Chinese, then he went to China, he learned the whole um, expressions and everything else that went with the language, and he felt very comfortable in China communicating. And whereas he felt weird in the UK, he said that he thought he stood out for being weird. When he went to China, he said he thinks that all Westerners are kind of weird in China. So he doesn't stand out more than anyone else. Um, so again, I'm not sure if that answers the question, but the fact that um, he, he, so his mother, um, his, his mother is a great champion of, of Daniel, actually. And, and you know, I, I mean, I'm sure that, and I know that she's experienced some of that distance that um, sometimes parents can experience when a child isn't shown them the love and affection um, that they would like. But um, I would say that that relationship was based more on, a, on another um, parental relationship that I was making a documentary rather than Daniel's with his own mother. I suppose I, I asked that question because I did. I mean, I thought the film was beautiful. I thought the portrayal of the autistic character was in some ways authentic, but I just found it worrying as an autistic person myself that somebody was portrayed in a way that would, seemed quite inconsistent. I just couldn't... I could not see that as, as a... Um, as either a helpful or essentially an authentic portrayal of, of, of a character, so that was a bit worrying to me. But yeah, and I think that's fair enough. And, I, and again, I think it's very difficult in a film where actually, uh, you know, I'm making a film about a single person or a group of people rather than a film about autism and such. Um, but, you know, I know that I think my experience with, with Daniel is hopefully authentic in the way that Nathan is portrayed. And I know that when Daniel watches the film, that he feels like that is him and that is him speaking and he very strongly identifies with the character. And although, um, in, in, in if he's inconsistent, I think, again, it's not so, so for example, it could be seen as though towards the end when he's able to show some signs of emotion or affection towards his mother, that somehow he has been cured in a way. That's not true. He has always been able to, he's always felt emotions, and Daniel tells me this, that he feels emotions very strongly. Um, but what happened is with, with Nathan is that these were, were tucked away, they were hidden away, because he found them too painful to deal with. He associated them with his loss of his father, and he felt that they were irrational and illogical, and they didn't make sense. So he hides in the mathematical world, which does make sense, is rational, is logical. Um, and then through meeting Zhang Mei, 
um, she is almost a catalyst which draws that, that side of him out of him. But I, I, and so I can see that because there's a change in him during the film, or we see that there's a change in him during the film, that that might be seen as an inconsistency. But I don't see that so much because I, I know what the real character is based on, and I know that he feels that it's close to his experience. <laughs> I mean, that's the. I mean, I suppose. I suppose my thing would be that obviously everybody has different perceptions of, of people, and um, of course, it's very difficult in a situation where uh, a subject is new. I mean, autism is relatively new in film, so it it, it it just has a certain weight attached to it. So you know, clearly you've done. You know, you, you've thought a lot about it and done, you know, great. But I also understand the responsibility of that as well. <coughs> First of all, thank you for an absolutely stunning film. I really enjoyed it. Um, I suppose as a, a mother of uh, three young people on the spectrum, I really did associate very closely with the, the mother role in there. Um, and I was amazed at her very powerful performance. And I was just wondering whether she spent a lot of time with um, parents who had young people on the spectrum in order to get that sort of insight. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks a lot. I, I, like many other people who said um, previously, I, I really enjoyed the film. I thought there were a lot of really interesting things and that you took on quite a lot. So well done. Um, I was kind of interested in a couple of things. I was interested in, in the decision, two, two key decisions for me. One was, and I just wanted to get you to explore that with me a little bit more. One was the decision to, to make the teacher um, have MS. And I wonder whether that was just something that, again, you drew on personal experience from your documentary, or whether that was something that came through the script development process. Um, and the other was, was kind of what the relationship is between the car crash and the way in which, towards the end of the film, uh, we return in flashback to the car crash, um, and how you think that works in relationship to the portrayal of autism through the lead character.
Um, I mean, I, I think you know the, the crash was really the the moment in which uh, which Nathan then just couldn't deal with what had happened, um, and again the mathematical world became his refuge. And as the, as the crash is, you know, in the immediate aftermath of the crash, um, and he's looking through the windscreen and he's looking at the traffic lights and he's observing the patterns that are going on um, with those traffic lights. And, and, and he, he's just automatically kind of shutting out what's going on next to him. So that was the point that he, he, he just um, closed off that, that world which was too painful to deal with um, and, and became more, and it almost externalized his mathematics in a different way. Um, and actually in the, in the original script, um, that manifested in him developing a theorem around traffic lights, um, and uh, uh, where, whereby they would be safer. Um, and uh, and there, was, there was anyway, I, I won't bore you with it because it was actually something I came up with, and so it wasn't very good. Um, but there was uh, anyway, there's a blue warning light that he came up with where it could detect if a vehicle was travelling too fast. But obviously, none of that is in the film now, so it doesn't really help. Um, but uh, but the point is, is that that's when he 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 reverted into he start he hid within the mathematical world that made sense to him. Um, but when he's in the exam, <clears throat> and building up to that point, there is a realization for him. He's invested everything into. Uh, the, the winning of this medal. It's the most important thing in the world to him. He thinks it will make him happy. And having made films in some of those other niche worlds that I mentioned competitions, uh, competition-wise, and having met people who have invested an enormous amount of, of energy and time and emotion into the winning of a medal, whether if it's the World Taxidermy Championships, I met a man who devoted his life to stuffing tiny fish, you know, and he would spend six months making one tiny fish um, with the sole aim of winning the World Taxidermy Championships. And when eventually he did, um, he became very depressed because he thought that this, you know, his life would change and it would make him happy. And, and he realized that it didn't. And he told me that the medal had a gold si side, which was very shiny, but on the back, it was a very dark side, and he fell into that dark side. So, you know, I, 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 I wanted to sort of save Nathan from that. So the idea that, you know, he realizes that the problem that he has to work out, the stuff that he has to work out, is not what's on the page. It's all of this complicated stuff that he's been shutting out. Um, and it's the memory of, of his father and what that meant to him. And through meeting Zhang Mei, that's all started bubbling up. And some of the feelings that he's experienced by meeting Zhang Mei or feelings that he associates with his father, which is love. Um, and so, you know, that's what he realizes that that's what he needs to work out. It, that's not, it's not what's on the page. It's not sorting that out that's going to make him happy. Um, if anything, it might make things worse. So that's why he leaves. Um, and, uh, and, and tries to, to, come to, to begin to come to terms with the other problems. Um, and sorry, the, uh, the, the first part of the question. I, I mean, I don't know if that's really connected with his autism. That's just him, and that's what he does. I think you've answered that very well. Thank you. My first part of the question was was the decision to um, have the teacher have MS, and I just wanted to know a bit more about that. Yeah, I think that's right enough. I, you know, and that didn't come from me. I mean, that, James Graham, who was the writer, um, that was James, and um, uh, he would probably be a better place to a a answer that question. But in a way, it became important, partly because um, I think, you know, Humphreys in his own way was quite isolated. And in a way, it's a film about people who are isolated um, or on their own in, 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 their, in their own ways, whether that's Nathan or whether it's his mother or whether it's Humphreys. Um, and um, I think part of that isolation was to do with the fact that he couldn't see a future for himself because he knew he had this illness, which was a, a degenerative illness. Um, and so he couldn't, he couldn't think about having a relationship. He couldn't think about enjoying his life in the future because all he saw was it going downhill in a way. Um, and it was something that was kind of in the background of the script originally. And then Rafe, um, who plays Humphreys, um, he went to a number of groups uh, for people with MS, similar to the one that is in the film. 
and he came back from those groups um, talking about the things that people were talking about in those groups and the things that were important to them and the kind of things that came up. And so that then fed into the script and we, we then worked some of those themes and some of those conversations, if you like, in, into, the th into the film. So I think it became more of a, a feature, if you like. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I suppose just the idea that, that, that everybody has their own reasons and for being isolated or for feeling like they can't move on from the place where they are. And ultimately it is a film about people coming together in different ways um, and overcoming some of those issues. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering a little bit, there are a lot of young actors who some may and may not have done things before, but how was it working with these young actors and actually getting them into the thinking and the feeling of the movie since it is autism, which a lot of kids don't actually get to experience a lot. So how, how did you do to work with the kids and young actors in that sense? Well, I, I think it was the great thing about working with the young actors, and, and obviously it's fantastic working with the, the adult actors, and they've, they've done what they've done, and they're, you know, they're brilliant. Um, but working with the young people um, at a time in their lives, it sort, I sort of felt I was, I was meeting them, some of them at, at the beginning of their journey, um, and I can you know, imagine them and, uh, and hope that they will be great stars in the future. Um, so that, was, that felt very exciting. Um, and uh, whereas, uh, well, actually, Asa amongst them. So Asa, who plays Nathan, who I don't know if anyone recognises or knows from his previous films, but um, he uh, was in a film called The Boy with the Striped Pajamas, and he was he was the little boy, <laughs> the little boy in that film. Um, and then, when he was a slightly bigger boy, um, he was in Hugo, and he was the lead in that film, which I don't know if you've seen that, but it's a Martin Scorsese film. It's a very big film which was only a couple of years ago, but because he's, he's shot up, you know, about two foot in two years, um, he's, yeah, he's not, you know, he's not recognised on the street. But, and then also in a film called Ender's Game, which was, again, a very big sort of space film with Harrison Ford and Ben Kingsley. And, and, uh, and so he's been in some huge films, whereas most of the others, this was either their first experience in film um, or they hadn't done a great deal or they might have done a bit of theatre. And, so, so working with them and, and that, that sort of frizzle that happened when they all got together was, was great. Um, and you know, some of them were playing characters who were on the spectrum and some of them weren't. But, they, uh, but the ones that were um, certainly met with people um, uh, who, who were on the spectrum and talked to them about their experiences. Um, but, uh, and I also, I mean, we, we reached out to a number of, uh, through our casting director, to a number of groups that work with young people, performing arts groups, and who work with people, um, with autistic people as well. And I saw a number of people who I auditioned um, as well for some of the roles. Um, and uh, there's some, some cameos from some of those people in the film. And there's also several of the people who are in the original documentary who are in the, in the film as well. One of the the team, the, the UK team squad members, um, who was actually our mathematics consultant as well, ensuring that all the maths in the film was correct and <laughs> setting all the problems and teaching everyone the maths because it was very important to me and to all of us that the maths in the film was correct because I knew it would be being, scru be being scrutinised. And, and also I know that there's a history of films that um, have a mathematical theme where uh, there are sort of massive equations on the on the board and uh, and any mathematician can see that that's sort of gobbledygook or yeah. it's not relevant to the kind of mathematics that those people would be studying so it was important to me that that was all correct so li li zhu zhao um is uh, was one of the original team members he was then our mathematics consultant and he also looks he looks so young and he was with us all the time so i cast him in the film as well so he's one of the team members and then there are other people the uk maths team team leader um, is is in there. He has a cameo, as does the deputy team leader. So, so there were a few people from the original documentary as well in there as well. But it was a pleasure working with all of those young people. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure.
Yeah, this works. It's past 8.30, which is when we said we'd finish. So um, um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank, thank Morgan for l allowing us, firstly, to show um, such a wonderful film um, before it's actually released um, and for taking the time to actually come to, to speak to us. So if Not we just at all. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you also to, um, to um, Sophie Allison and Mark Frodsham from Ambitious About Autism for helping us put all this together. Um, to everyone on my team at Cray for also helping put the, all this together and organising everything, particularly the popcorn and making sure that you all have popcorn. I heard, the, I heard them rattling during the... During the it's always good. Um, but most of all, thank you so very much for coming. I um, hope you enjoy the evening and to see you at another event very soon. Thank you. Thank you.